It's often true in life that the unsexy sounding things are the ones that will impact you the most. Trying to lose weight? Eating clean doesn't sound very sexy. Trying to build financial freedom? Living below your means doesn't sound very sexy. Trying to get buff? Going to bed at 9 p.m. doesn't sound very sexy. Okay, going to bed at 9 p.m. does sound sexy to me, but that's besides the point. So, what is the vibe coding equivalent here? Clean and clear project management. Because nobody knows the pain of recurring bugs and forgotten solutions quite like a vibe coder in 2025. Not to mention all the feature improvements and refinements that you had great ideas for that you forget by the next morning. So how do we fix it? Well, that is what we're going to be covering in this video. If you don't know me, my name is Sean. I deploy real AI stuff into businesses. Some of them I own, some of them I don't. And I'm here on YouTube trying to communicate what I learned to other people. And this video is no exception. So let's get into it and make the unsexy super sexy. The sad truth is most vibe coders would consider themselves lucky if they even document their project to begin with. At best, it lives inside of some todo.markdown or readme.markdown file that's half updated, and you just continue to vibe your life away, building the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Well, sadly, the prompt generate YOLO ship life cycle really starts to break down when you are building fast and you can't remember all of the tiny details that you are coming across. This is why I've grown to love the linear app and its MCP server. Because instead of scattered documentation files and mounting technical debt, you get to spend more time actually fixing, building, and shipping things that people will actually pay for. Your brain should be focusing on product, market, fit, and execution, not trying to scribble down notes hastily through some scattered, disjointed note-taking system where you can hardly actually keep track of your bugs and the things that you want to improve. Luckily, with Linear, this becomes super easy. So first off is Linear's pricing. They have a pretty generous free tier, okay? So for $0, you get unlimited team members, two teams, 250 issues, and then some different integration access. And even if you were to upgrade on a monthly basis, $10 per month is nothing. You're going to get unlimited issues, unlimited file uploads, tons of pretty cool stuff. So an issue in this case is basically like a, a task, maybe an actual bug, an epic, pretty much any like unit in the system of documenting a thing that needs to be done is considered an issue. So you get quite a bit of tracking on their free tier. So once you're signed up on that free tier, it's really easy to get started with it. All you need to do is copy this command depending on the IDE that you're using. So for example, if I'm using Claude code, all I need to do is copy this command. So once you have that command copied, all you need to do is hop back into wherever it is that you configure your MCP servers inside of cursor, inside of Claude code, wherever it is, paste in that command, hit enter. It's going to ask you then to authenticate in linear. It's going to pop open linear in a browser, allow you to sign in with your account, and then you are good to go. So now from that moment, our project is infused with the context really of the entire business critical blockers that we have, future roadmaps of what we want to build. Everything about this project and how it's being managed is now infused directly into our code base. So I ship features and fix bugs probably three, four, five times faster now because I don't lose context. I'm not switching between tools and I keep the momentum of my project at all times. And you can too, pretty simply. So let's take a look at what some of these workflows might actually look like for you in practice. So there's a few very concrete use cases here. We can create bug tickets and feature requests in plain English. We can actually update those tickets again in real time in plain English via our code editor. We can query our backlog to see what it is exactly that we should be working on next. We can even reorganize our entire project management system to make it more cohesive and smooth. So I'll give you a quick story here. Back in the day, I used to work as a solutions engineer at a tech startup. And part of that role meant running into a lot of bugs because we were pushing the app to its limits. And so a lot of that work meant running into problems, but having to document exactly what that problem was and the details around it, the files that were involved, the exact error messages we were getting so that the engineers could hop in and immediately fix that issue with full context. Now, creating a detailed, really good report often took like sometimes 15, 20 minutes to get all the proper file context, 
all the different error context, the exact user workflows that were happening that generated that bug in the first place. We had to provide all of that to them so that they weren't out there searching for something that they didn't really have context on. Now with linear, that is like a 10 second process. So if you're building stuff on your own and you don't have the luxury of like a support team, a product manager, a solutions engineer, you need to build in frictionless self-management for your projects. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like. So here's an example of a real project that we're building on this channel and other videos. And we're running into this issue where things keep breaking on certain screens because the way that the design tokens are being pulled into the front end, it's just not working and there's some really weird bug going on. So I can come in and I can say something like document all the related files and the issues of these tokens not loading and add it as a critical bug backlog via linear MCP, prioritize the bug relative to the feature's core product requirements. And so at this point, the MCP server is going through and it's doing its thing. It's finding all of the projects, all of the labels, all of the issues that we have in these projects. And it's now prioritizing this bug in the context of all of those different things. And so once this thing is done, if we were to flip back to linear just to check out what was made, we can see that we have this critical blocker now in our bug backlog, right? In the bug board. And if we go in, we can see a ton of detail about this, right? We can see the severity of this thing is critical. It's a complete blocker for the app because a lot of our important screens won't render. What is the root cause? We have circular dependencies which are causing issues with how the modules initialize. So it's saying, hey, you have multiple components that import this token thing. Um, these different files are involved. All of these core system files are involved. Here are the different temporary fixes that we have tried in order to fix this thing. All of the different components that are affected by this, affected screens, workarounds that we have tried, what the permanent fix for this needs to be, steps to reproduce it. Again, the impact on core features that we have. Just a lot of documentation that when we go back to solve this thing now later, say I need to go somewhere and I need to come back to this and I accidentally like lose context, for example, of my project, maybe like the Claude code thing clears out. Now I don't have any of the context. Well, I do have it, right? Because I have it here. I can provide this to the system and then we're off to the races. Now, let's say we had a different thing like this one, for example, and we're done with this. We actually fixed this one and we're in our workflow and we want to update it, right? So it's called GUL 43. So let's say that's the one we wanted to update. So I could say something like, I want you to go check on the progress of our backlog, uh, specifically the item that's kind of involving this open AI connection with our recipe embeddings. And I want you to evaluate if we've resolved it. If so, I want you to mark it complete, right? And it's gonna go out, it's gonna evaluate if we actually fixed this thing. And then from there, we will have the status updated if it's fixed or not. So it's actually telling us in this case that that issue is not in fact fixed and it's then proceeding to actually do the update, which I don't want to do in this video. So I, I interrupted that. But this process really mirrors how successful companies actually work, where they are managing that backlog, they are prioritizing that backlog, and then they're executing each day through that backlog of tasks that they have. So you're already vibe coding. It is time to start vibe managing your project. And I should put that on a t-shirt. So let's check out a simple process we can use to really take this to the next level. So one incredible power up here is that we can retain the app's context at the point in time that we decide to make the ticket. So a bug can automatically capture stack traces, error logs, get diffs between versions of the app that actually worked versus the version that does not work. A feature request or improvement can capture user journeys, related code pieces, different dependencies in the project. And an Epic, for example, can show how all of those different pieces connect together. So this really becomes a powerhouse because when we kick off our coding the next day, we can automatically pull in all of the context of the issues or improvements that we were working on. And we can query through related bugs using natural language. So for example, I could say, pull me all of the bugs that are related to my authentication system and see if there's an underlying shared root cause that we can resolve. So this is really big because context loss will really kill your vibes and potentially kill your project because it results in a lot of frustration, having to solve things multiple time, and oftentimes going down a really dark path of making changes that you do not know exactly what it's making. And you're like, ah, I hope this thing's gonna work. 
Let's see if it go does it. So this workflow makes sure that if we need to sideline something for any reason at any point in time, when we come back to it, we know exactly where we were. And more importantly, the system that we're using to code with, whether it's Claude or Cursor or whatever, that system knows exactly where we were. So this is particularly helpful if you're running into a situation where you are bumping up against the context window size, right? You're at that like five, 10% left and you wanna make sure you're retaining everything you've worked on. So one of the things that's really nice about how Claude code works is that when we use this compact command, we can give a custom instruction on how we want it to compact and the type of summary we want. And so we could say, for example, retain all the relevant files, a natural language summary of the various loops we've run through trying to solve the issue, and the three most likely long-term fixes. I want to specifically know what we tried to do that didn't end up working so that it can be documented, right? So now that that is done and we have this full summary, we could say something pretty simple, like update the related bug report with this added context via linear, right? And this is gonna go out to that other bug report we made and add in all this additional context. Now in this specific example, we already had a lot of context, but we have even more in here now. So it's specifically calling out what we already tried to implement that did not work. And this is critical because when we launch a new context in the next window to try to solve this three days from now, we're not gonna have this thing where we're going back and trying to redo things that we already know failed. So we have this journey of failed attempts. It's saying this finally worked, even though I know it didn't because it's still not building. So I'll go through and update this. And then we have these three most likely long-term fixes, which is saying, hey, we need to actually just refactor how this thing works in general. So this is most likely what I'll go do. So again, it's reading our full context, attaching any necessary or related info that we're asking it to attach, all without you having to really break your workflow, go into some tool, have to make the thing, have to document everything all done for us now automatically. And then we could go, for example, create a new branch and work on something entirely unrelated until we need to come back to this thing. So there's a ton of reasons behind the obvious, like, hey, this helps me do my stuff now that you would want to use this. Number one, if you want to actually break through like that 10K per month MRR SaaS business and beyond and really grow it into something, one of the biggest bottlenecks that you will inevitably face is that you need to bring in team members and get them up to speed quickly on what the app is and how the thing actually works. And Linear helps enable that. And number two, the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. And in this case, the interest is our development velocity. And the compounding factor is our ability to use a tool like Linear to move faster and faster and faster while retaining everything we need to know. So the bottom line is this, in order to succeed and even sell something that you're building one day, you do not have to have the best, most clean code. But what you do need is to be the one with a clean and clear paper trail so that anybody that looks at your project can understand how it works and the iterations it has been through. If you can't explain it all to a buyer, there's a really good chance that they are not gonna buy it. So the bottom line is that Linear and its MCP are a major secret weapon that will help you turn your vibe coding chaos into development velocity. So my recommendation to all of you is that you sign up for Linear's free tier and actually start using it in your workflows every day. So remember, if you want to scale, it's not just about perfect code. It's about documentation and understanding what you have built with a clear paper trail so that you can understand it, teammates can understand it, and anyone that might be interested in this app one day can understand it. So keep vibing, but do it smarter. Your future self and your future customers will thank you for it. Now, if you want to see a video series where we're actually using tools like this in a real development workflow, you can check out the four-part playlist that I will link at the end of this video. We have the first two parts of that done. It's over four hours of content already on YouTube for free. And the next four hours will be coming in the coming weeks. So make sure you are subscribed if you care about that type of content, you like seeing full app builds, and you like seeing tools like this integrated into real everyday workflows. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.